It seemed to take a while for Julius Caesar to realise the significance of what he had inherited from Attalus of Pergamos, but when he did, he duly conformed to the Babylonian system. He assumed the position of supreme ruler of Rome, and it became an empire, thus confirming his kingship. He also made himself high priest in 63 BC, a full 70 years after the death of Attalus, therefore establishing himself as the legitimate successor to the head of the Babylonian mysteries. To complete the Babylonian system set, he then also declared himself to be a god, exclaiming on 25th of December 48 BC in Jupiter's temple in Alexandria that he was in fact Jupiter's incarnation. The Encyclopedia Britannica says about Julius Caesar, There are signs that in the last six months of his life he aspired not only to a monarchy in name as well as in fact, but also a divinity which Romans should acknowledge as well as Greeks, Orientals and Barbarians. He seemed to slowly realise that his new titles, particularly High Priest, gave him legitimate claim to be not just ruler over Rome, but ruler over all the peoples who subscribed to the Babylonian system, as they had all descended from the same source. With the position of High Priest re-established once more, a new chain of links were in place, and it could be passed down through the succession of rulers in Rome. It was from Julius Caesar's name that the subsequent Roman emperors took the name Caesar, which was thereafter a title invested with kingship, priesthood and godhood. This fact gives added poignancy to the trial of Jesus before Pontius Pilate. When Pilate brought Jesus before the Jews, he asked them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. What they were effectively saying is that their true god was not their king, their only king was Caesar, head of the Babylonian mysteries and the earthly head of the satanic system of worship. It was another of those straight choices between two kingdoms, as all choices of this type are. In that declaration, they chose the kingdom of darkness. They paid the penalty for that declaration too. Just as the Lord gave the Jews into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar after they corrupted themselves with the worship of Baal in the Old Testament, so he gave that generation of Jews into the hands of the Roman emperors who they professed to follow as punishment. In 70 AD, under Titus, and some decades after they had made their declaration at the trial of Jesus that he was not their king, the Roman army marched upon Jerusalem and destroyed it along with the temple. Thus Babylon and Rome have in common that they both destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. And that completes section one of the study. We followed how the mystery religion was passed down through the period covered by the Old Testament from Genesis, and in the next of the four sections we're going to start following it from the time of Jesus, right up to the period of the Enlightenment.